Series live. It is uh, actually Wednesday morning in the U.S. Uh, where I'm at, it is about uh, well, it was about 60 something degrees. Early morning was in a high 50s, so I I dressed accordingly. Right now, I'm down to a beanie and uh, hoodie is off. As I wait for some of you to join me this morning, I just wanted to uh, say good morning, do a quick check, and if you're coming in from overseas. Uh, my wishes and prayers to Adele Jacobs for good test results on uh, some testing she had done earlier today coming in from South Africa. Adele Jacobs, uh, hope you get some great news on your test results. Um, at this moment, as I wait for some of you to join me, I just wanted to uh, say good morning and do a little bit of a plug. This evening at 6 p.m. West Coast time, actually 5 p.m., out in California, 8 p.m. on the East Coast, I've got um, I've got Dr. V, Dr. Stephen Vizard, coming in from the Seattle, Washington area, and he is going to share his story on real men, real talk, raw. Uh, although his backstory includes his journey of healing from the diagnosis of bladder cancer, there's another part of his story that I think is just as important. Um, and that is basically the rebirthing. Good morning, Adele Jacobs. I actually, good evening over there in South Africa. I just talked about you. And since you just joined me, I want to say I, uh, I caught that you had some testing done today. And I hope that, I uh, pray that you get some amazing test results. And uh, I know it's going to take some time, but you are in my thoughts and prayers. As I just deep dive a little bit into tonight's show with Dr. V, Dr. Stephen V., Dr. Stephen V. was a psychologist in practice for 47 years. And as he went, went through his, um, let's say, his healing journey from bladder cancer, uh, it really changed his perspective on Western medicine and how he had been working with and treating his clients, his patients, uh, in his practice of psychology. And uh, by the time he woke up, um, and got the news that he was NED, no evidence of disease. Um, he decided to exit out of the business of practicing psychology. And today he, uh, he has reinvented himself. And I'm going to leave that, that part of the story for Dr. V to share. But it's going to be an, an amazing show this evening of uh, just pure courage. And uh, Dr. V sharing from... Um, from his truth as to uh, why he went uh, went through the changes and why he chose to reinvent himself and come back healthier and stronger than he ever had been. And also this Friday, I've got Carrie Crary coming in from Scottsdale, Arizona. She had been a prior guest on the show. When she came in, she came in to share her healing journey from cancer. However, and on this particular show this Friday evening, she is going to share... Um, how her life had been impacted when she'd made the decision uh, to get breast implants years ago for her, uh, for her relationship with her husband and how it has impacted her life and her health and the decisions that she most recently made regarding her breast implants. She's gonna come in and share her story, share where she's at in her healing journey and how the, her breast implants have impacted her life then and now. So that's going to be a powerful show on Friday. Uh, Carrie will be coming in under Real People, Real Health. And so we got two, two shows back-to-back -to -back tonight at 8 p.m. East Coast time and on Friday. And then next Monday, fast forward, I've got Sandra Bassett coming in. Sandra Bassett is an R&B soul singer, Motown soul jazz. Uh, she's got an incredible story of uh, having um, spent uh, most of her career in corporate America. She has an MBA and she was working for some of the largest food companies in the world. And she woke up one day and everything changed for her. She's going to come in and share her story of what it took courage and faith to reinvent herself and step out of corporate America and into the world that touches her at her soul level. And uh, she's going to share her story. That'll be Monday. Um, I'll give times as we get closer to each show. She's going to be coming in under Real People, Real Stories. So three shows, three different platforms, three incredible guests, individuals that have, uh, that have shown up for themselves and are making a difference, not only in their world, but are making a difference in 
the world of people that they touch. I just paused for a second because uh, I just saw a lizard. Um, but it's just an absolutely beautiful day. I, I had an amazing morning. It was cool out. I had a hoodie on. I got my beanie on. I was protected. I was, I was taking care of myself as I spent uh, the last two hours in prayer and meditation, uh, sunbathing, nature bathing. Now, nature bathing does not mean that I took my clothes off. It just means I'm in nature and I close my eyes and I meditate and I pray and I, I just allow, allow myself to feel and be aware of all senses except for taste, of course, because I can't taste nature. Well, I can if I choose to, to pick something off of a plant, but uh, that wasn't part of my, st part of my uh, agreement for this morning. But um, it's been a beautiful morning. I'm excited for today as a uh, share. Uh, earlier this morning, I was, as I was hiking up one part of this trail, uh, I was totally impacted by Simba. Remember Simba from The Lion King? Oh my, uh, that was one of my favorite all-time Disney movies when my children were young. I loved that movie. And I didn't understand, I never really understood why that was. I just, I loved the music but I really didn't have an awareness, like really what was tugging at me until I saw Simba today. I saw the Lion King at the top of this incredible mountain. I posted about it. And for me, you know, it's uh, the symbolism, the metaphor for Simba was uh, he had a lot of adversity. He had a uncle, Mustafa, I think was his name, who, uh, who felt threatened by him. And so he sent them out. He had to leave. He had to leave where he lived. And he was uh, basically sent out to... Uh, survive on his own for for many years until he came back home and uh and well you may know how, how the rest of that story ended that movie ended but the metaphor for me is uh you know we we have a choice too today to uh to either accept our woes accept our diagnosis accept our relationships that may be toxic uh accept the life of suffering um and we could throw in a towel and just uh, remain in a mode of being a victim. Or, or we could climb our mountain and we could fight. Not fight. I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to take that route. No, no, no. That is not the road I want to go with because I am no longer in this to fight. Because when we use the word fight, we're in fight or flight. We actually release cortisol from the sympathetic nervous system. And that actually causes disease. So... This is not about fighting. This is not about battling. Uh, but um, he felt empowered and he was able to take back his life. And so therein lies, we also have a choice. We have a choice to, to fight, fight and or run. We have a choice to battle or we can take another path. And that path is learning how to first like ourself, how to love ourself, how to take care of ourselves, learning what we need to... Uh, to nourish ourselves, to nurture ourselves, and to love ourselves. And through that process, we, our body, will respond through the positive parasympathetic nervous system, which includes releasing of the healthy hormones like serotonin and endorphins. And of course, we get the vitamin D. But when it's all said and done, that's a choice. You know, we don't understand. We don't realize, because I didn't, that we can control so much of what happens in our life by our thoughts. When we when we are in thoughts of darkness, thoughts of pain, thoughts of fear, we're actually creating the perfect storm because our, our brain is releasing uh, cortisol and adrenaline. And that basically sets us up for living in fight or flight, which then creates the, the opportunity for disease to set in. Or if we rewire our brains or biohack our thoughts and go to focus on creating positive thoughts about ourselves and our life, we will actually help release the healthy, positive hormones, as I mentioned, serotonin and endorphins, um, and begin to allow our, give our body the chance to heal from whatever it is that we've been, let's say, in fight within ourselves over for some of us for decades. So I want to just take a quick moment to acknowledge some of you that are here with me. Cherie, coming in from Costa Mesa, California. Um, Arulia. I really am not sure where you're coming in from, uh, but please uh, let me know what country you are, in fact, coming in from. I suspect it may not be the U.S. Lacey Smith coming in from either Las Vegas or Colorado. Good morning, Sharon Jones coming in from overseas. Good to see you, Sharon Jones. 
Um, Cherie says, I love you, Mufa Mufasa. Yes, Mufasa. Well, there you go. So, yeah, I just want to say this. I was, I was picking up someone's feed last night, and I read it. And, um, you know, it was interesting because I really, when I, when I think about and I hear people talk about um, the disease that they may be diagnosed with or the, the struggle that they're dealing with in relationships in life, we tend to, we tend to lean into the words fight and we lean into the words battle, like I'm battling a disease, whatever that is. And here's my perspective on it. As long as we are battling a disease or battling in a relationship or fighting a disease or fighting in a relationship, we are, we are still living in, in the, uh, in the cortisol, the fight or flight mode. And that's part of changing biohacking. Our, our words we speak will help biohack our brain, our thoughts. Instead of us battling a disease or battling in a relationship or fighting, why don't we just put down the swords? Why don't we just put down the weapons? And let's embrace a different approach because battling and fighting, there's no winners. Everyone loses. Everyone loses. There's no winning in that game. So is it not time to put down your swords, put down your, your weapons, put down your sarcasm, put down your hurt feelings, put down how you think about yourself and how you speak about yourself and how you speak about a disease that perhaps uh, a doctor tells you you had. And instead of fighting it and battling it, let's raise our arms in the air and let's say, yes, 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 I can heal. Yes, 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 I wanna be well. I'm no longer battling, I'm no longer fighting. No, 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 there's no winners. There's only losers. We don't win a battle, we lose. So that's how it's worked for me. I'm not in a battle. I'm not here to, I'm not here to fight. I'm here to love. I'm here to learn how to love myself and love others, coming from love and kindness learning how to embrace the gifts of life, even when it feels painful, even when it feels discomfort, even when it feels like it's dis-ease. Through all of those emotions and feelings, if we embrace them as saying, what is it that I am here to learn? What do I gotta learn about myself today? We no longer have to see it as a burden. We can embrace it as a blessing. So I encourage you, climb your mountain, Get to the top. Get to the top of your mountain and own it. Empower yourself. Own it. Just like the Lion King owned his mountain. I saw my Lion King today and I saw him yesterday. And I know this, as long as I get up, as long as I'm given one more day by the divine to breathe, to do this thing called life, I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see the Lion King tomorrow. And he and I are going to have a chat. We're going to talk about what's most important. And that's about healing. Mind, body, soul. So um, I hope you're having an amazing day. No matter what you got going on, put down a to-do list. If you're working in an office at lunchtime, get out of your chair. Get out of your office. Go outside and walk for 30 minutes or however long your lunchtime is. Take 10 minutes to eat. Spend the rest of the time walking. Move. Why is that so important is because when we move physically, we release the positive hormones from our brain and it just flushes throughout our entire body. It feels good. The feel good feelings come from movement and those that those feel good feelings come from serotonin and um, endorphins. And then when you're outdoors, even if it's cold out, you're still getting sun. You're still getting the sun, which creates a vitamin D, which is so healthy for you. And what's going to happen is, I almost guarantee you, your afternoon is going to be a whole lot better than your morning was, especially if you hadn't taken time to move this morning, other than from the bed to the coffee maker to, the, to your car and to the office. But that's what I challenge you today, is take some time to move, get out, do something for yourself, put on some music, skip, dance, sing, do some jumping jacks, whatever it takes to start to feel better about yourself. Have a beautiful day. I hope you catch us live tonight. Real Man, Real Talk Raw at 6 p.m. Actually, 5 p.m., 5 p.m. West Coast time, 8 p.m. East Coast time, and 6 p.m. on Arizona time. We'll be live in a studio with Dr. V talking about uh, 
a shrink going vogue. Catch us live. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Take care. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.